Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Why is it called the Bear Wozniak Adventure? Because we all are on an adventure. Our job is to seek the Lord and uh, and to find out what kind of adventure he has for each of us. And you do that by seeking the Lord and then just saying the simple, most dangerous prayer in the world, Lord, thy will be done. When you pray that prayer, it makes you a dangerous a dangerous man. We'll be right back. We've got Deacon Harold Bur Burke Sivers with us today. We're going to talk about his new book, Building a Civilization of Love. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife, Cindy, always tells me, start off what, your segments with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So we will do that. Meka inoa o kamakua kekeki ame ke uhana hemalele in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have with us a Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. I usually do a little two or three minute monologue, uh, but for most people I think it sounds like the teacher in the Charlie Old Charlie Brown uh, cartoons, the blah, 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 blah. So we're just gonna dig right in here with Deacon Harold. Deacon, welcome to the, to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Thank you, Bear. It's always great to be with you. Thank you for having me back. You know, I was telling my wife, uh, I, I checked out your schedule, your upcoming schedule, and I go, honey, he's speaking every week someplace. And, that, and ever since I've known you, that's been the case. I think I've bumped into you in, at airports more than at, <laughs> at events, you know. And now, and now uh, when we first brought Deacon on, he had one of those uh, electronic backgrounds, very spiritual looking too. And then it didn't quite work, so he turned that off, and now we can see his real office. If you watch the YouTube version of this show, you're going to see... Uh, I would say there must be a, a thousand books behind you, stacked every which direction, two layers deep. Uh, love that. Love that. Do you love the way books smell? Oh, I do. That's why I will never own electronic uh, book or e-book ever. <laughs> you know, I love the feel of the book. I love the smell. I love the almost a relationship, a tangible relationship yes. with the book. You know, your pages and you can write it in and highlight and make notes in yes. it. And, you know, it's almost becomes like a part of you and you just don't get that yeah, same experience my, like my library you. my library is ruined because i always underline so good luck donating yeah. my library someday to, to anybody but when you got your new book uh building a civilization of love did you open it up and smell it smell the ink i did i opened it up and i and i i felt it and i looked around and i flipped through the page i went like this yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a real author. That's how you can tell someone who loves books and is a real author. When my first book came out, my my uh, my literary manager said, "Did you smell it yet?" And I go, "Yeah, I did." You know, it's just such a books are so beautiful. Um, and you talk about having a relationship with a book. Well, Jesus is the Word. You know, the Logos. Uh, he's the Word of God. Before he was called uh, Jesus, he was the he was the Son of God. He was the Logos. Uh, how important how important are words, Deacon? Yeah, well, words are extremely important. I mean, after all, our whole faith is the word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? Mm -hmm. Full of grace and truth. So words are what we use to be able to express and communicate, but not just between each other, between us and God, mm -hmm. right? So, so words are extremely important. Um, and it's also important to make distinctions between words as well. Um, you know, because words, one word can have several different meanings, you right. know, like for... for um, for example, in English, or for, I'll give you a good example, a biblical example. Um, in, in Genesis chapter 3, when, when Satan approaches Eve uh, about uh, eating the fruit of the tree, and he, he tempts her, he says, you will not die, for God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Well, when you read that in English, it says, well, you, he's talking to her. Well, hold on, when you look at it in Hebrew, you see that the you there is plural. Right. So so you could be singular or plural, just like in Spanish. There's two different words for the use. There's two, which means you or um, nos, uh, nos, uh, nosotros, nosotros. Yeah. vosotros, which vosotros, means all yeah. of you. Right? Yes. Same thing in Hebrew. The you is plural. So he's talking to both of them. 
right? Mm. So, so without without those distinctions, you can misinterpret what someone is saying, and you can not properly understand what's trying to be communicated if you don't understand the meaning of the words. In other words, a man was there and should have protected her. Stepped in the breach. Yes, absolutely. Right. That was his job: serve, protect, and defend. And he didn't do it. Well, let's talk about that in the in the light of the world today. You know, um, Tolkien and C.S. Lewis—they were great friends. Uh, one of them, they were both linguists. I forget their their exact formal titles, but they both loved the word, and they both warned about how people will uh, uh, gradually twist the meaning of words. And Tolkien said, "When you do that, you lose the whole history." Because that word has a history. And you know what? In my, I have this new book, 12 Rules for Man on this, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? A subtitle based on the life of Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. But, uh, but, <laughs> but I don't use the word masculine anymore. I go to be, I, I'm invited to go speak. Like I'm going to be speak, speaking at the big event in Orlando this year. You know, the, I'm in Tampa, the, the men's conference. And they wanted to call it masculine Catholicism. And I said, I won't come if you call it that. Call it manliness. You know, let's do, you know, the word man comes from the word, word, the word for man in Latin is ver, which is where we get the word virtue. And so in, in our world today, we're seeing uh, it's Satan's way to twist the words. You know, right? you see it right there. He twisted the word right there in Genesis. He twisted the word when he tempted Jesus. And we're seeing this great twisting of words. Like, for example, pro cho being pro-choice is such a twisting of the truth, you know, um, we, you can't use masculinity. You uh, you can't use the rainbow even anymore. Everything's been kind of co-opted and twisted. It's his it's his delight and his desire to cause chaos and to twist the words. And so we we see uh, so much in this woke culture, and we're seeing how God. Ha I mean, the enemy has uh, brings division that way. He 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 he. he, he he tries to split us up into diff separate subgroups, and your your new book, it, building a civilization of love, uh, is a counter to this thing of well, you know, you're black, you're white, and and you're trying to trying to divide us, and a scene that we're all made in the image of God. Can you can you begin to give us the the, the thesis of your new book? Yes, thank you so much, Baron. This is it uh, here, building a civilization of love. A Catholic response to racism. So during the pandemic, when I when I couldn't travel, uh, I wrote two books. Um, I was coming up on the 20th anniversary of my diaconate ordination, so I wrote a book called Our Life of Service, the Handbook for Catholic Deacons, and this second book, which which just came out uh, uh, just a couple days ago, and I wrote that book because I was looking at all of the things that were going on at the time during the pandemic, the George Floyd situation and all the instances with law enforcement and just this, this tension uh, within, within the, 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 the culture. And there was a lot of polemics. There was a lot of triumphalism. There was a lot of um, uh, attacks, personal attacks, but there was not much dialogue, not much real discussion. Oh, you're not allowed. You're race. not allowed to talk about it. If you, if you have one counterpoint, uh, to try to bring clarity, then you're a racist. You can't really even talk. But people are afraid to even open their mouths about it. Exactly. And so I wanted to write something that was going against that, to really try to find a, a way to move forward, to have deep, meaningful dialogue over this very difficult and sensitive issue. And I felt within my heart, truly, that the Catholic Church can take the lead and be in the forefront of this issue. Let's be real. We're always coming from behind. When there's an issue of gender or so-called redefinition of marriage or, uh, you know, the, the vaccine or whatever it may be, we're always kind of just like coming from behind, really not speaking up uh, the, the beauty of the truth and love about these issues. And when a law is passed, then we start issuing statements. It's too late mm. for once. Let's get ahead of mm. the issue where the culture can say, hey, look, Look what the Catholic Church is doing. Let's follow their lead. And so it's in that spirit that I that I wrote this book. And, and you're right, Bear. You are absolutely right about the meaning of words. And what I do right up front is I make the distinction between racism and prejudice. Because those hmm. two words have become conflated. And so every time someone says something, it's racist, it's racist, it's racist. Well, hold on. Take a deep breath. No, it's not. We have to make distinctions, right? Because as you so beautifully said, words mean something. We have to make clear distinctions. So prejudice. Prejudice is making a preconceived notion about someone without any subjective knowledge or objective experience. 
Um, and racism is prejudice, as I've just defined it. With the added piece, the reason why I believe this is that my race is superior to your race. That's racism. So let me give you an example, Bear. Um, well, let, 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 let's, ta let's take a break right now, yeah. Deacon, uh, so we can go deeper with this. Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, uh, and uh, uh, the new book is called what? Building a Civilization of Love, a Catholic Response to Racism. Beautiful. And who published it, by the way? Uh, Ignatius Press. Ignatius Press. Uh, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, you can find him at his website. Uh, what is it? What is it? Deacon... Uh, DeaconHerald.com. Yeah, DeaconHerald.com. How much harder is that? Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure and Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, his new book, Building a, a, a Civilization of Love. And that's what the Catholic Church does, right? It builds civilizations. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm going to let you guys know about my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? My wife uh, inspired that title. We were driving along the beach here in Waikiki, going over towards Diamond Head. And uh, this song came on the radio, and it was Paula Cole, and she's singing about, she's singing the words, Where is my John Wayne? Where have all my cowboys, go where have all the cowboys gone? And I just, I don't know about you, but as a young man, I love, I still do. I love cowboys. I fell in love with a cowgirl. My wife's a barrel racer and a and a, a trick rider, uh, among all all the other things that in her life. Um, but I saw in those men uh, there's there's what they call a cowboy code. They lived by a code, and I saw in those men a pursuit of virtue and a determination uh, to ride for the brand, to be a man of your word, uh, things like that. So in this book. I talk. I use the cowboy as an example, really, to dig deeper into the in, into what it means to be a virtuous man. It's a book that's gritty. It's something for a father and to read with his son or brother's uh, brother. It's like a conversation from brother to brother, and it basically it's boiling it down to grit and grace. You need both. You can't just be gritty, and if all you are is a softy, you're just saying, "Oh Lord, help me" all the time. 
you need to say, Lord, help me while I while I do this bold the bold adventure that you're calling me to. So, uh, go to Amazon.com or any bookstore. Uh, our website, deepadventure.com, but pick up the book, 12 Rules for Manliness and Women. You know it's your job is to get this book into the hands of the men. You mama bears out there, uh, get this book out to the men in your life. And uh, if you're a single mom, read this to your sons. And your daughters should read this too. It helps them identify, really understand what a real man is. We've got a real man here with us today, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. And, uh, and we're talking with him about his new book, Building a Civilization of Love. Uh, so much confusion even about what the word love is. Can you have love w without truth? Do they go hand in hand? Uh, no, no, they, they absolutely go hand in hand. Um, I remember uh, when our Lord, there's four different words for love used in the New Testament. Um, uh, there's philia, which is a, a, a friendship love, like Philadelphia, the, the city of brotherly love. Uh, there's storge, which is a family love, like between your... Uh, your cousin and your your grandmother, that kind of thing. There's eros, which is a physical, sensual love, and then there's agape, which is a self-giving, self-sacrificing love. The word is hesed in Hebrew in the Old Testament. For, it's the word that's used for a love that's self-giving, a love that's that self-sacrificing, a love that that does not look to the self, but always looks what's best for the other. That's the kind of love. As you, so as you're absolutely right, love and truth. And, and, and Psalm 119, verse 88, because of your love, give me life and I will do your will, O Lord. You know, so mm -hmm. love, life and truth are definitely woven together. And if without the true pursuit of love, you can never have the fullness of truth. I love the scripture verse, righteousness and, righteousness and peace have kissed, love and truth have met together. I think the next word I think, think is salvation has sprung up from the earth. And of course, that would be Jesus. So we need love and truth. So now speak to us the truth uh, when, ab about racism. In your new book, Building a Civilization of Love, you're about to go deep with us and we had to take a break. Can you remember where we were? Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. So I was making the distinction between the, the word prejudice and racism, mm -hmm. right? So I was saying that prejudice is a preconceived notion about someone without any subjective knowledge or objective experience. And racism is that same definition as prejudice um, with the added piece, I, I, the reason why I believe this is my race is superior to, you, to your race. So let me give you an example. At a parish mission of, uh, a couple of years ago, someone came up to me and said, oh, you went to Notre Dame. What position did you play? Oh. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, that was a compliment. That, that was a compliment. And it was, see, yeah, hearing but it that, was someone prejudice. said, oh my yeah. goodness, that was racist. That was racist. No, it was not racist. It was not racist at all. Here's why. He came up to me, he looked at me and said, oh, you know, you know a, a, a athletically built man yeah. plus Notre Dame equals football. That was a calculus in his mind. It was nothing malicious. There was nothing mean spirit about that comment at all. Like you said, Bear, mm -hmm. it was a compliment, but it was not a racist comment. In order for that comment to be racist, he would have to admit when he said it, the reason why I just said that to you is I believe that people that look like you, people of color, cannot get into a school of that academic caliber unless it was for athletics. You're just not smart enough. So, th see, that's yeah. racist. Right. But that's not what he meant. Because when he found out that I actually never played football and that I had an academic scholarship, he went, oh, oh, oh Deacon, I'm sorry. you know, And, and, he, and he pulled back. So it's very, very, again, prejudice, but, but, but not racist. Mm -hmm. What he should have said was, oh, you went to Notre Dame. What did you study? <laughs> right, because that's what he would have asked anybody else. Mm -hmm. Well, Deacon, when I see you, you're 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 a buff guy. You know, people ask me ask me questions like, like, uh, <clears throat> what sewing circle were, were you a member of? You know, when they see me. Uh, no, so so get, dig us dig us in in more into this. Uh, uh, what what the what the what the the situation is now, as it seems to be just getting, it get, it's going out of control. Everything is racist. I, I saw um, a YouTube of a w woman standing up and asking, I forget the general's name, but he was a black general. And she asked him, do you identify as black? I mean, things are just getting insane. Yeah, see, here, oh boy, there's so much here. There's, there's a couple <laughs> things. So, so first of all, our identity. I identify as this. I identify as that. Look, um, people ask me, for example, Bear, are, are, you know, uh, you're a black Catholic. I said, oh, no, I'm not a black Catholic. I'm a Catholic who's black. 
what what do you mean are you denying your black identity why are you saying that i said hold on when i die and stand before jesus christ to be judged he's not going to ask me how black i am he's going to say i gave you three talents fatherhood i gave you uh being a husband and i gave you being a deacon Where's my 30-fold, 50-fold, 100-fold return on the investment I made in you? Wow. Did you pick up your cross and follow me, even when it was difficult? Mm. Even when people were maligning you and making fun of you, did you stand up for me? You know, just like I stood up for you on that cross. You know, th that's what he's going to ask. Now, my identity is in the fact that I am a loyal son of the living God that I am a brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is my identity. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I deny my cultural heritage. I was born in Barbados. I mm. love my, my, my Caribbean food. I love our culture. I love our music. I still speak our dialect. I love everything about being black. I thank God every day that I'm black. But that is not my identity. My identity is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The problem is without that foundation of relationship, as you said so beautifully, uh, Bear, love and truth, you're trying to find your identity in the things of the culture, in cultural constructs, in the thing that the culture tries to create because it wants to replace God. And you will, and, and with mm. that, it just brings nothing but confusion, just like the Tower of Babel. Well, you know, I'll say here, here in Hawaii, we're the, they say we're the most diverse place in the world. We have so many, uh, because of the, where we are right in the middle of nowhere, we have so many different races that are here. Uh, Hawaiian, Filipino, Puerto Rican, uh, black, uh, Ukrainian, Norwegians like me, Hawaiians, uh, Mexicans here, the cowboys that came were from Mexico. We have such a mixture here, uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's beautiful because uh, as we, as we there, there isn't really a predominant race here. We we're we're here together, and in fact, my children when they came here and they they went to a largely you know Hawaiian school, they understood oh this is what it feels like to be a minority, you know, and so they got to they got to experience the the reality of that. But but um, but here because so many people intermarry too, we're beautiful beautiful people, and uh, and so we get to we we kind of look past all. It's almost like we don't see that because we're so there's so so much diversity here and everyone is. I think for the most part is so is are so accepted here. Um, so what what is the I love what you say building a civilization of love. How do you define love? Yeah, so that quote comes from Familiaris Consortio, John Paul II's document on the family, right? Mm. And it's the love that as I described it before is the agape type of love. It's a love that's rooted in covenant. Right. That's the relationship that God wants to have with us is a covenant relationship. That's why the, the priest says the holy sacrifice of the mass, repeating the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a child of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. See, the problem is we live in a culture that says relationships are just contracts between people, just exchanges mm. of, of bodily fluids or information or ideas. No, it, it's covenant. It's exchange. It's a gift, a complete and total gift of self to the that's other, right. and that other gives a complete and total gift of self back to you. That's the love that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. A love that's not looking for um, its own, uh, to, stand, to stand on its own. It's not a love that always looks what's best for the self. Mm, yes. It always points towards the other. Yeah. And that's how we're, the, the first brick that has to come out of the wall nope. of, of racial division. We'll, 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 that's so cool. We'll be, we'll be back. We're talking with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. You know, I love it. Thomas, uh, Thomas Aquinas, love is to will the true good for the other. Uh, willing it in a, in a form of action. Then you have John Paul II's statement that love is self-donation. You put those two together, and that's really what the definition of love is, is willing the true good for the other. We're talking with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. We're talking about his new book, Building the Civilization of Love. Um, is it, and that, is it, what is the subtitle, Deacon? Uh, Building a Civilization of Love, a Catholic Response to Racism. All right. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Fear. Years ago, during the midnight of my soul, I considered ending it all. My pain was serious hard to bear. Two things kept me from self-propelling myself across the Grim Reaper's bridge to eternity. Concern for my children, and two, the fear of God. 
When the love of God doesn't convince you, the fear of God will keep you. I, now, I love my daddy, and my daddy loved me, but it was a healthy fear of my daddy that kept me from doing wrong. The prospect of my daddy's rawhide, meaty hand applied to my posterior was, well, I might trouble him at the time, and that was a good thing. He never injured me, just applied the right amount of motivation where it was needed. I enjoy God's love daily, repeatedly. It comforts me. But it's the Good Shepherd's rod and staff that prevent me from harming myself and others and keeps me out of trouble. His rod protects me from the enemy, and it disciplines me. Folks don't like hearing about the fear of God no more. In fact, enlightened folks, so-called, think such fear is primitive religion or superstition. Folks like the shepherd's staff that rescues, but not so much the rod that is to be feared. Yes, fear means awe and respect, but it also means fear. Daddy's discipline only needed to be applied now and then. One episode left a lasting impression. Yet I had his protection, provision, and love every day. Isaiah prophesied that Christ would, quote, delight in the fear of the Lord, end of quote. Since Jesus did so, seems we should be mindful of doing the same. Yeah. This is Dan LeBoon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want everybody to know that our new season of Long Ride Home, season four, 11 episodes, all filmed in the island of Hawaii, are, are airing on EWTN. And you can go to our website, deepadventure.com, and if you become a member of the Mama Bears or the Man Cave, you get to have access to all, all 33 episodes. You get private, you get the private links, the private YouTube links, so you can share it with your, your friends and family. You can evangelize using those. And... Uh, and uh, you can go to Prime Video, too, and watch them. So we just invite you to, to check out uh, the, the further adventures of the, the pack as we, as we rode here in the islands. Uh, we have with us to get, that's Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. We're, riding, we're talking today with Deacon Harold Burke Sivers uh, about his new book. It just came out, uh, Building a Civilization of Love, The Catholic Answer to Racism. Is that how the subtitle goes? A Catholic Response to Racism. Yeah, well, what do you mean by civilization? Um, yeah, so so uh, the civilization is um, the context of how we live together as a community on this planet, right? So we have different civilizations that have existed throughout through history. We have Israel. Uh, we see many different civilizations in the Bible. Um, we, we have a civilized society where there's order and structure and meaning. The problem is there's a tremendous uh, tendency toward a breakdown within uh, culture where there's tension, conflict, and struggle. Is kind of how the culture sees itself. Always, um, always uh, uh, in conflict with with the other instead of trying to find reconciliation. That's mm -hmm. not civilization. If you don't have order, if you don't have structure, if you don't have meaning, if you don't have purpose, you're going to end up like the Romans, right? The most powerful civilization on earth that fell to the barbarians. Why? 
because they lost sight of their purpose and, and their mean. They, they got lazy, they got greedy, they got slothful, they got lustful, and that was their downfall. And, ge and gender and we're confusion. We're seeing the same and, thing today. And gender confusion along yeah, exactly. with that. Right. So then, exactly. so now, we're so saying what, the same thing today. Yeah, they say that before every uh, fall of a of a of a of an empire like that, there it gets to the point where it's it there it it's chaos, moral chaos is what brings them down, including gender confusion and things like that. So, um, sorry, I have a test going on here with my phone. I'll turn it off. Um, so, um, so what I wanted to ask you then is, is what you you talk about building a civilization? You know, Jesus was a builder. He was a tecton. That's what that word means, I believe, is builder. How does the and, and he said, "I will build a church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it." Uh, and so we know that we don't know anything that he built except for a church. And so the church is this great structure, this great building that God can use to bring civil civility, to bring a civilization, a civilization of love. Um, how does this? How do we as Catholics then? What is our solution to racism? Yeah. So the the thing is, we have to see each other the way God sees us, right? On on, on page one of the Bible, Genesis one twenty seven, it says we're made in God's image and likeness. What 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 does that mean? The word image is salem in Hebrew. It's it's a a, a, a masculine noun. It means someone that stands opposite. Uh, uh, as a shadow, that's the outline or representation of the original, right? Really? A shadow, that's the outline or representation of the original. So if I'm standing in the shadow, uh, if I'm standing in the light, I'm casting a shadow. The shadow's not me, but it's the image and outline of me. Uh, so what does that mean spiritually? Are we God? Of course not. But uh, First Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verse four says we are partakers in the divine nature, right? First Corinthians chapter. Uh, chapter 6 verse 11 says that Paul says our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit yes, that we have yes. within us from God right we're not God but we have God's image God's outline uh, imprinted onto our souls right and and and, and the word likeness is demuth a feminine out of Hebrew which means similar right um, so uh, like if, if my son was standing next to me you, and it was a statue on the other side of me you would say they both look like me because they're both in my likeness but my son looks more like me because he he has my my nature, right? He shares my nature and, and he shares what he has from God within him. So even though the statue may look more like me, my son is much more in my likeness. Mm. It's beginning to have that understanding. When I look at the person standing in front of me, I see what God sees um, when that person stands in front of me. And, and, and when I begin to see that first, then I can appreciate their color, their race, uh, and all the other things that they bring to the table. But first, I have to see them the way God sees them. I have to look at them through God's eyes. Absolutely. And you can see, you know, when you, when you, when you, um, when you first see a Maju Day, I know for me, it manifests in an unusual way. When I'm in line for coffee, I'm going in line for coffee, I may be the, I try to get, oh, someone else is coming in the door. I better get in there first. Because like, it, oh, wait a minute. God loves them as much as he loves me. You know, and you get that check and just kind of being aware that when we love others, I love that. You know, think about it. Uh, the in philosophy, the word accident means, you know, like here's here's a chair. But the accident of that chair would be it could be red. It could be blue. It could be cloth. It could be hardwood. Think about what God does. When I walk down the street down here in Kalakaua Avenue, people from all over the world are here. And I go, oh, how did God say they're, they're going to walk up right? They're going to have two arms, two legs, eyes, nose, ears, mouth. How did he make so many different types of people that look so unique? Of course, he's going to use colors for hair, colors for skin, and all that other stuff. But what a, what a, what a beautiful creative act. And then to begin to see what God calls us to when we love, uh, we love others for God's sake. You know, not for our sake, not even for their sake necessarily, but for God's sake because he loves them. Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. And so when we see others, our imagio dei, um, we're, we're, we, we can't help it, but put them first and, and to love them for the sake of God. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. And, and then when we do that, we're fulfilling the mission and purpose of Christ, right? Mm. Um, no greater love than one has to lay down his life for his friend. And 
Yes, I mean physically laying down your life like the martyrs did, yes. but it also means laying down maybe a convenience, right? Uh, laying down comfort, right? Um, for your wife, for your kids, for your friends, you know, for, for that person, um, you know, maybe maybe something simple as, uh, you know, uh, uh, when the light turns green, letting that person cut in front of you, that get in front of you yeah. uh, on the highway. Instead yeah. of trying to cut them off. No, I'm going first. You're not yeah, getting in here. Yeah. You know, little little things That's like so that true. speak about the beauty of yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah it, it's so true. So, okay, so, no, and think about this now. I'm, I'm a white man here in Hawaii. And, you know, the, basically the white man took these islands from, from, uh, from the Hawaiians. Uh, you know, there's no doubt about that. Um, but, uh, and, and, and some, some not too much because, you know, the Hawaiians here know how much I love them. But sometimes I will get the racism pointed at me. And, like, you took our islands. And I'm like, well... Stalin took the Ukraine, and, and, and so we were forced out of the Ukraine. I mean, we've all, we, we, so, you know, uh, so as a, as a white Caucasian here in Hawaii, oh, you came and took our land. Well, I love, your, I love your culture, and I love your land, and I'm here to love you. But, you know, my people were forced out of, you know, the Irish here were, were forced out because of, of persecution. Uh, the, the famine was just, was, was just but made it worse. So we all kind of have to look at each other and go, you know, you're not all that. Um, in, in some respect, but that well, I love you because of who you are as a person. I respect you because you're made in God's image. But what I look for is the dignity of your own life choices. We look, you know, there's there is a, there's the political thing now where we're going to we're going to appoint a, a black female lesbian as opposed to saying, let's let's choose the best person for the job. So we should look at someone for their virtue and for their identity, not for these other things. Am I am I right? I don't know. Well, you're exactly right. And that's exactly what Martin Luther King said. They want to look at the, the, the content of their character right. and not the color of their skin. That was his dream. That was his hope. Right. But here's the problem, Bear. When Martin Luther King died, it left a void. It left a vacuum in this discussion about race. And, and there's no one that has filled it. So what has happened in the midst of this vacuum, people and, and, and ideologies and institutions have tried to fill it. But the problem is it's like a Trojan horse. It says race on the outside, but inside is an agenda that has nothing to do with race and, quite frankly, has to do with the destruction of the nuclear family yes. and uh, turning our culture into a socialist society. And it's basically saying you, you're weak. You can't do this without the government's help. That doesn't, that doesn't show. Exactly. Big, I mean, think about our, our community here of the Asians here in Hawaii. They came here. They came here uh, basically as in engendered uh, uh, ser servants on the plantations here, and look how they how 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 beautiful. When we go sit down in a restaurant, I see the beautiful Japanese or Chinese or Korean families, and the respect that they have for each other. How hard they work, and and I and and you and you and you see that to say to someone, well, you can't succeed unless we. Uh, Unless we like the, the the presumption that you went to Notre Dame because you were black and you were strong as opposed to your academic success. That's racism. When people say, well, you can't succeed without our help. We'll put you in this little category and you can't succeed without our help. We got it. We'll take a quick break here. Deacon Harold, what's the name of your book again? Your new book. Building a Civilization of Love, a Catholic Response to Racism. And what's your book again? I, I had it written down the book on 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 being men. I love that one too. Which one is that one? Oh yeah, um, behold the man. Yeah, a Catholic vision of male spirituality. And there's a whole series on it on EWTN too. We're talking about Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. Yes, we will be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air. You can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. 
Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome to the bear wasnick adventure we're here, here with deacon harold burke sivers deacon you know my dad my, my dad was a deacon uh he served in minnesota and in uh in uh in uh, hawaii even in arizona but he was a deacon at this beautiful Catholic church in Lahaina. I don't know if you heard about the, the you know, you know about the great destruction that de took place there. There's a church in Hawaii, Maria Lenakila Catholic Church. Beautiful Hawaiian name, isn't it? It means Mary, yes, it is. Mary uh, Our Lady of Victory. He probably baptized and even married some of the people that we lost in that great uh, fire. But when the fire came through, all the buildings came down, like whether they're made out of metal or cement or wood it, everything everything was just gray but there in the middle of the town is 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 our maria lanaquila catholic church even the school associated with that church was burnt down but this church remains standing because within that church is uh the eucharist you know the body blood soul and divinity of, Je of jesus christ and so this the church is 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 not just a beacon of hope the, the church is hope himself the church is is Jesus Christ you know the we, we call ourselves the body of Christ for a reason what is the church's solution to racism we're talking about your new book of building a civilization of love what how can the church lead in 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 the of, of dealing with racism and bringing a, a civilization of love yeah one of the things that we can't do is act like the culture so you're not going to see in my book anything about reparations or anything like that um, it has to start from the grassroots. It has to start, from, I believe, from the parish level. It has to start with the family, right? Uh, the quote, Building a Civilization of Love, comes from John Paul II's uh, beautiful encyclical letter on the family. And so I think we need to start with the parish family, um, and appreciating the great diversity that's within the parish. Like one simple thing, for example, Bear, um, is having potlucks, yes. right? In our parish, yes. we have, a, we have yeah. tre yes, we have tremendously diverse culture. We have of uh, Vietnamese, we have Filipinos, we have Africans from several different African countries, we have Europeans. And what we did, we had a potluck and everybody brought their food. And there were some people who were trying different foods for the very first yeah, time. Yeah, that's so cool, like, I never right? Had this before. Yeah. And and you experience culture through the food, right? And that's what Jesus did. Think about yes. it. Hey, hey Nicodemus, come down from here. I'm going to have dinner at your house tonight. Jesus was always eating, you know, yeah. because he knew that food was a way of bringing people together. Well, how cool, yeah. You know? Yeah. You and, know, and the other thing is very simple, put images that reflect the church inside the church. So our church was Irish and German. So we had these statues of uh, St. Uh, Bonaventure for the German patronage and St. Patrick for the Irish patronage. But now the church is Vietnamese and African. So now we have Our Lady of Lavang, an approved Beautiful. apparition of our Blessed Mother in Vietnam. We have St. Martin de Porres, yes. right, the great Dominican saint from, from South America. We have St. Kateri de Tequitha. In there so now yeah. the images in the church reflect the people that worship in the church as well but you know this is interesting because like i live right next door to saint augustine's of the sea right next i mean the altar is basically straight below my condo here um and we have a beautiful tongan community here and uh, our priest you know is barefoot during mass and uh you know we have we have the hawaiian royalty um things that are made out of feathers to celebrate, you know, it, it's the Hawaiian culture celebrating the, the Polynesian culture, I should say. But one thing is, I, I, lo I love to go to the Tongan Mass. Oh, it's powerful. So we can all go to that Tongan Mass, but I, I really feel bad because I can look out my window and I see sometimes they're having a huge barbecue outside the church. 
but no more no more howlies like me you know we don't the, the the you know it's just the tongans and i would love to just say can i please come i would love to come and and and, and sample their food exactly right so 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 breaking bread together and uh and and and, it, and loving and you know i had a, i had a um, a man say to me here 20 years ago he said come over here show me your driver's license and i showed him my driver's license and you know hawaiian driver's license he goes well you know I don't know exactly how he made the point. He said, I see how much you love the Hawaiian culture, how much you love the Hawaiian people. And he said, this, this says your last name is Wozniak, but you're Hawaiian. He loved how much he knew that I loved them for their unique culture. And by the way, does it cult mean religion? You know, that the essence of culture in, in so many ways is, is that thing that brings us to God, you know, in, in a community. Am I getting off track? <laughs> no, that, that, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And so, so joining together, uh, bre breaking bread with each other. I think also doing service together, like the Knights of Columbus are a great example of how holding those fish fries. It may not seem like a big deal, but it really brings it brings everybody together. Everybody working together, the Christmas tree lots, all those things. Um, so, so to 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 bring to and to bring and then for families to invite families to to each other's homes. We I don't see that happen that much anymore. Am I wrong about that? Where, no, since especially since the pandemic, yeah. a lot of that's been just shut down, which is which is sad and tragic, because again, that's a beautiful way that communities come together, you know. And so it's it's sad. To see. So we need a, re, a revitalization of that. And I think the perfect opportunity is now, since there's an emphasis on the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist that the U.S. bishops yes. have been doing for the past. You know, this is next year going to be the third year. You know, so it's very important emphasis right now. So I think part of that is rebuilding the body of the Christ of Christ focused and centered on the Eucharist and then expanding that into the the agape meal from first Corinthians chapter uh, 10 and 11 uh, where St. Paul talks about that after the master was this meal where people got together and they and they and they fellowshiped and that's something that needs to be recovered yeah so tell us tell us something else in the area that the church can do to, to help uh, yeah so I build... think honest mm -hmm. yeah honest discussion and dialogue for example um, racism is not something that's innate, right? That that's one of the tenets of critical race theory. For example, it says that 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 racism is an innate trait, which well, that means it, it, we're basically born racist, which is not true at all. That denies the Catholic teaching on the natural law and original sin. But but so racism is learned. For example, you see little kids on the playground, four years old, five years old, they they are not looking at what color race you are they're just kids playing they're just kids playing together they don't care about race or color but over time when they see movies and right. they see yeah. stuff on the internet and they see stuff on social media and they hear jokes from their friends they begin to learn these different things again these are where the prejudices start to build and start to develop even even racism starts to build and develop over time and so what we have to do is have honest discussions for example i would love for someone to say to me you know deacon for some reason, when I'm around black people, I just feel uncomfortable. And I, it, it doesn't make any sense. I, I don't even know why I feel that way. And, and I don't want to feel that way. Can we sit down and talk about it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Please. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. That, yes. That's a difficult conversation to have, but it's honest. And that's what we need to start to do to, to, to try to figure out where these things come from and, and learn how to overcome them so we can begin to see God in the person standing in front well, of us. Let's, go, let's just go right to this, too. You know, in the culture today, I have these conversations with a lot of different people. Um, men will come up to me and they'll say, well, you know, life is so hard now for men. Taxes are so high. You know, women are, men, women are all man haters and, and uh, we're made to look like provincial buffoons uh, on TV and commercials make fun of us. And I go, man, just listen to yourself. You're a whiner and a complainer. You're a victim. You know, all so it seems like society wants to say, here's the oppressor and here's the victim. They divide everybody between oppressor and victim. And now the men I hear, oh, society is oppressing me. Oh, women oppress me. It's really a victim mentality. And what we want to do is affirm that every man, regardless of, 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 of color, um, has the dignity to not be a victim, to say, yeah, yeah, life is hard, dude. Life is hard, but I'm not going to let life dictate to me. I'm going to be an overcomer reg regardless of, of what condition I find myself in. I can win from there because I have the grit to do it, and I have the grace of the Holy Spirit to do it. And I think that's what happens is we see so many people in the, in the, in the different, my, different races complaining 
uh, that they're a victim. And white people complaining they're victim of 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 of, of fe- people of color towards them and vice versa. Just why don't we just stop being a victim? And I think half of the racism would go away. Just let's just start manning up and do it and, and, and live a life of virtue and love others in spite of themselves. You know, love ourselves in spite of ourselves and, and lay down our lives for each other. You've got a minute and a half to, to fix this. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do talk about victimization in the book as well. Mm. You're exactly right. You know, we have to see ourselves in light of Christ. We're building not a civilization of uh, excuses, uh, uh. not a civilization of uh, woe is me. And yeah. feeling sorry for yourself. Yes. You know, um, I, I'm an immigrant, come from a broken family. My parents are divorced. You know, we I grew up in the hood. And it, it's, it's about the choices and the decisions that I've made yes. following my faith in Jesus Christ that got me to where I am today. Yes. You know, so as men, we need to serve, protect, and defend. Get back to the original uh, mission that God gave us from the Garden of Eden. Eden, serve, protect, defend. Once we do that, stop making excuses. Then we'll be, you know, uh, become the men that God created us to be. Simple, strong men, strong family, strong family, strong church, strong church. We take back this culture. Yeah, the, the creed I think of the modern man is pity poor me. And I, but I, but I think that there's a rallying cry. I think that there's. There's something we men come factory loaded, though, to be heroes. We come factory loaded to be a bucket of grit and grace. And when we can do that, when we when we just take a hold of that and we start making one good decision at a time to not be a victim, regardless of what race we are, to not be that victim, but to be that man, then uh, God can do stuff with that. God, the Bible says I, the, 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 that God's eyes look to and fro throughout the earth. To, that he might strongly support the man whose heart is totally yielded to him. And that's that dangerous prayer. Thy will be done, God. Oh, that's your will? I got I to gotta go do that? I got to gotta, gotta, gotta go get an education? I got to study harder? I got to lay my life down for the, my, my wife and my family? Yeah, and you're going to find dignity in that no matter what race you are. What, what, no matter what hand you've been dealt, you can win from there. I'm a ninja black belt, you know. And the history of the ninja is, uh, the, 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 the logo is a, is a is a, a sword uh, aiming at a heart and the and the and the motto is though my enemy hold a heart my his blade to my heart i will prevail so regardless of what where you're finding yourself you can win from there but why because you've got god with you and with god is with you uh, who can be against you deacon where can people find Amen. you and your new book the name of your new book again building a civilization of love a catholic response to racism at deaconharold.com Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, such a, such a joy to see you. I guess next time I see you, it'll be in an airport someplace. Uh, hopefully <laughs> sooner than that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I hope so too. Okay. Well, we got to roll. You know, here we say our goodbye uh, with the words of aloha. Aloha means ha means breath. Aloha means to give breath, as Jesus did when he said, "My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you," and he breathed his spirit on his disciples. And so, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.